everyone. Um, so my name's Alice, and uh, as Kieran said, I set up the Joyful Web with Sophie, my business partner, um, about a year and a half ago. Um, <clears throat> so leading on from what Ben was speaking about, today I'm going to talk from a bit of a more personal perspective from mine and Sophie's journey, where even if you do all of the right things and tick all the boxes, there can still be stumbling blocks that you encounter in winning the right clients and growing business um, and for us for the both of us fear was probably the biggest part of that and that's what we focused a lot of our energy on looking into and overcoming over the last year and a half so I met Sophie in 2017 I met her about a year and nine months ago and we set up the joyful web about a year and six months ago <laughs> so we went into business not really knowing each other We'd never really run a business, well, we had never run a business before, so we didn't really know how to run a business, and as it turned out, we didn't really know ourselves that well either. So we started off incredibly excited, you know, all of the kind of energy into, you know, knowing what type of business we wanted to create, knowing what we wanted to do, and then somewhere along the line, around sort of six months later, something had changed. We felt like we were struggling, Things felt really hard, work felt like a chore, and something just wasn't connecting for us. And that's when we had the realization that we weren't actually the ones that were running our business. Fear was what was running our business. So we came to that realization because when we'd started, we'd done all of the right things. We'd done all of the things that Ben spoke about in his presentation. We'd sat down, We'd had a lot of conversations around the type of agency that we wanted to be. We knew that we wanted to be marketing consultants for mission-led businesses. We wanted to work with businesses that had a purpose, that wanted to affect positive social change. We wanted to change the way the world views marketing, which is a pretty bold statement, but we both came from agency backgrounds where we'd found that our job really wasn't fun anymore. And we really, truly believe that marketing could and should be fun and shouldn't be a chore and shouldn't be boring and shouldn't be scary. And that was something that we wanted to get across with our business. And we knew what our values were. We knew that we wanted to be creative. We knew that we wanted to stand for authenticity in everything we did. And we knew that we wanted to be daring and we wanted to take the kind of risks that we weren't really allowed to do when we were working for larger organizations. So, what was it that went wrong? It turns out that fear is actually the worst boss ever. <laughs> Think of every bad boss you've ever had. Fear is actually the worst. Because when you're operating from a space where you're making all of your decisions based on fear, you can't live from those values. You can't live from those purpose, the, the purpose that you've, um, that you've created for yourself. You can't go out and speak to people in an authentic way because all of the decisions that are being made in the background are running on, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? I have to safeguard against that. So for us, what did having fear as our boss look like? It looked like taking on clients that were not right for us because we were really scared. This is how we felt like all the time. Um, <laughs> So we were taking on clients that weren't right for us because we were worried that we weren't going to make enough money. We were undercharging because we were scared that we weren't good enough. You know, imposter syndrome was rife and we were really worried that if we charged what we really thought that we were worth, people would be disappointed. Um, we were competing with each other because, like I said, we didn't really know each other and we were really scared that the other one was suddenly going to turn around and look at the other one and go, oh my God, she's got no idea what she's doing. Um, so we were trying to, we, we weren't working as effectively as we could be working as a team. We weren't putting ourselves out there because we feared what would happen if we made ourselves visible. We feared attracting criticism. We feared rejection. Um, we didn't sign a lease on a proper office because we worried that that was too big a financial commitment. So we stayed for too long in a, working in a space that just wasn't inspiring us. And we didn't go after what we really wanted because we feared not getting it. So 
coming from that space, the message I really want to get across today is that the antidote to all of this stuff, the way that you can go out there and win the right clients, and, and I'm not standing here as someone who's you know, got it all figured out, because this fear does come up again and again and again, because running your own business is scary. Um, but I found, we both found, that the antidote to fear is courage. And what we've learned over the last year and a half is that courage is a muscle. You don't suddenly wake up one morning and decide that you're going to be brave. <coughs> the same way that you don't wake up one morning and, you know, as, and decide that you want to start running and then go out and run a marathon. You know, you start with a mile a day and then the next week you might increase it to two miles. The same as you start making those small, brave decisions that are aligned with your values. And I absolutely love this quote. Um, I went to a conference called Wildfire Women last year, and Susie Walker, who is the editor-in-chief of Psychology's magazine, was giving a, a talk about imposter syndrome, which just blew my mind. The woman who is the editor-in-chief of Psychology's <coughs> magazine has the same fears that I have. And she said this, she said, the only difference between you and that successful person you compare yourself to is that they're brave. And that, hearing that to me was like, oh my God, that's so, that's so true. And this is something that I remind myself of on an, on an almost daily basis when you know, I'm scrolling through social media and going, oh my God, everyone in the world runs a more successful business than I do, which is a, you know, a really easy thing to think. Um, and of course, being brave looks different to everyone. You know, being brave doesn't necessarily mean that you are a superhero who goes out every day ready to defend your values and your purpose to the death. Um, and so for me, being brave and having courage looks like this. And this is what I've been really working on. Having confidence in my opinions and knowledge. So standing up here and talking to you today, I have a bit of fear about doing this. A year and a half ago, that fear would have been on another level. Trusting others. When you run your own business, if you want to grow your own business, you cannot get away with not building a team. You have to delegate. You have to trust people to support you. <coughs> trusting myself, trusting my instincts, trusting my feelings, um, that I know when something isn't right and when something is right putting myself in a position that could attract criticism. So saying what I feel on social media, in conversation, at events like this, saying what I really think and feel, being able to say no, like Ben said, having enough confidence in our values and in our mission that we can say no when something isn't right. And then being able to walk away from that knowing that we've made the right decision. And on that note, of course, I'm not saying that fear is always bad. Fear is an evolutionary response. It plays a part in telling us when something is not right. And that's a big distinction that we've made in the <coughs> last year, is knowing where your fear is coming from. And for me, it is the fear here. Is it in my gut? Is it an instinct? Or is it in my head? And an example of that is, you know, if you're, if you're talking to someone and some, you know, about a project, you're making a business decision and something in your gut is not feeling right. Trust that instinct and walk away from it. And when we've done that, what's happened to us is new opportunities have presented themselves, even better opportunities that are aligned with our values, which we wouldn't necessarily have been able to take on or even had the headspace to notice were there if we'd have been consumed by going down a path that wasn't right for us. So. You know, that, that is really important to learn to, to listen to that instinct. Mm -hmm. Knowing when to feel the fear and do it anyway, and knowing when to back off. So knowing when to feel the fear and do it anyway is when the fear is not coming from here, it's when the fear is coming from here. When there's maybe a project or a challenge that is calling for you to take a step up that you're maybe not sure that you're capable of, but you really, really want to go for. That's a healthy fear. That's a fear that you can push through, and that is a fear that you do not need to listen to. Um, 
and obviously running your own business presents its own challenges like this over and over again. You are forced to take a step up all the time if you're going to keep growing and progressing. And one of the distinctions that has really helped me to make, um, and I'm going to share this with you because I pretty much try and get it into every talk I do because it's made such a difference to me, is really noticing when I'm saying the word but and replacing it with the word and. And noticing how different that feels. So saying, I really want to take on this project, but I'm, I'm worried I don't know enough. Saying instead, I really want to take on this project, and I'm worried I don't know enough. Or, I'm not happy working with this client, but I really need the money. Saying, I'm not happy working with this client, and I really need the money. Because for me, but closes off opportunities and it keeps you trapped by fear. Whereas if you say and, it creates the ability to see things another way, to see that there's another way to do it, to see that there is another way to make that money, to see that there is a way to gain that knowledge in order to go after what you really want. So I hope that's been helpful. And overall, what I want to leave you with is that the fear doesn't really go away. The fear is always there. And it doesn't have to be the one that's running your business. Thank you. Thank you.